Hey guys, Edward here. So I wanted to actually do a video of installing Windows 7 on a new Ryzen CPU from scratch. Previously I did a video upgrading from an older AMD CPU and chipset to the new Ryzen CPU and chipset. So I actually want to do one just actually installing from scratch as opposed to just shoving a hard drive with already Windows 7 and drivers already installed basically into a Ryzen CPU and Windows 7. Uh, I also want to demonstrate as well too this is possible with the new Ryzen X, the AMD X470 chipset along with the new Ryzen 2 CPUs. This is a, a little shot here of the uh, previous video I did here on the computer, the Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, and uh, that was actually a success. So today I'm going to, from scratch, I'm going to be doing an X470 motherboard with a Ryzen 2 2700 So in my opinion, CPU. this is probably considered one of the least complicated methods. It does require some prep work though. Uh, actually, you probably will need the assistance of another computer, an older computer, that you can just install Windows 7 on from scratch without any uh, need for any SATA drivers or, or whatnot during and before the installation. The trick is basically to get the Windows 7 installation rolling, go up to a certain point just before it reboots to hit to get you to the first welcome screen, or even at the welcome screen itself, though preferably just as, just as it shuts down before you get to that welcome screen. Yank the hard drive out, put it into your Ryzen computer, and off you go. Another little thing to do as well, too, is just to have chipset drivers and other drivers already saved on the hard drive. You'll actually this you actually need the additional PC for this as well, too. So let's go ahead and uh, sh let me show you exactly. Let's do a little prep about. work here. Here I have an X99 motherboard based CPU, and uh, over here we have just a little spare. SSD I have here about 180 gigs, definitely more than enough for inst just a basic installation to demonstrate this. So I'm going to use this computer to basically just get the Windows 7 installation rolling. And uh, so with no drivers or anything installed, our SSD was picked up. So we'll just go ahead and uh, start the installation here. So this should probably take a moment, and we'll just go ahead and just one thing when Windows 7 is installing, just want to know. Don't enter a serial key while it's installing. Wait till after installation is done and chipset drivers have uh, been installed and whatnot. Then you can go ahead and activate Windows 7. If you actually go ahead and do that before any of this, you may have to reactivate it again. It's also not a bad idea once you get this hard drive going, this, uh, let's call it a generic X hard drive. It's actually not a bad idea to clone this hard drive and leave it exactly the same state that we're about to leave it in just to get prep this uh, Ryzen 7, Windows 7 installation. Because then, in the future, when you decide to install Windows 7 on another Ryzen 7 or an Intel-based motherboard that does not have USB support during installation, you can actually use this generic hard drive, clone it again, and you do not no longer need a secondary computer to do this over and over. So, over here, our uh, installation is actually getting close to finishing up. And uh, this is actually right after one reboot so far. You can tell that progress is going pretty well. We're going to shut this computer off as it's rebooting yet again, because after that, it's going to be booting, quote, Windows 7 for the first time. And um, that's when we hit the welcome screen. This installation of Windows 7 I'm using here is just some basic generic Windows 7 that I have on the thumb drive. It is an uh, installation you can install Windows 7, but I really use it for more recovery and repair and whatnot, or even just sampling, just like this. So let's see if, uh, I'll probably go ahead and skip over to when it's about to finish its installation and uh, the reboot will kick in. Over here we can see it's about to prompt to reboot, so I'm going to go ahead and shut this PC off whenever you're ready. So the last step before you move it to the, your Ryzen motherboard would be to actually copy your chipset drivers here. So basically I plugged in the little SSD here to this little uh, dock, USB 3 dock, on the same computer that I actually installed the Windows 7, used to install the Windows 7 installation, now that I got my original drives plugged back in. Over here, we see the, our Windows 7 installation. And under users, obviously, no account has been created because we didn't let this computer boot up or create any particular account at the welcome screen. But all files have been installed, so this drive is bootable. So we'll go ahead and um, copy over and download any drivers. Just basically, you can just copy it in just over here.
Now that our drivers are installed, I just want to introduce you to the computer we're going to be working with here. Uh, I've definitely done a review on this before. It's the X470 Gaming Pro Carbon by MSI, along with the AMD Ryzen 2 2700 CPU. So you can see over here, I already went ahead and uh, disconnected um, one of the hard drives already originally plugged into this computer, leaving one SATA port for this hard drive we have here. Guys, I can't stress enough how important it is. Whenever you're doing something like this, wherever you're piggybacking a hard drive for any Windows installation, be sure you unplug these drives that are originally in your computer if you're going to be using a favor from another computer because there was one point in the past where I accidentally deleted a partition from a 3 terabyte hard drive that I had left. Uh, I was able to very easily get that partition back since so little time has passed. But I have to tell you, that could be pretty disastrous in other cases. So just definitely keep that in mind when you use this particular borrow an old, a PC method for any particular reason. In this case, the OS installation we're about to do. Another thing we have here is our PS2 mouse. Plugged in the back already. That's very important or we won't be able to navigate anything in the Windows 7 installation and install chipset drivers. So now with everything installed here and chipset drivers already saved, um, let's go ahead and plug it in and boot it up and we'll take it from there. One little note, if you only download chipset drivers, that's fine. You can feel free to download any other drivers you'll need after. However, just do remember you will not have internet access even with chipset drivers once you're done. Your LAN drivers will not be installed. So. But by then you'll have USB port support, so if you want to, you can always download those drivers on another, from another computer, plug it into your thumb drive, and copy it over. Alright, so let's go ahead and get started. I'll be using this uh, secondary monitor up here. And I did plug in this little wireless keyboard and mouse combo. Obviously it's not going to be working until after we install the drivers. But it will work when we're right here. Now this error does occasionally come up when we follow this method. No problem, just hit Windows normally. And um, we'll go ahead and see here that starting up. So again, you could have done this previously and then quit right at the welcome screen it will require you to hard shut down the computer so you'll definitely be getting that oh windows is not boot up error but over here in this case up oh, some drivers kicking in here and there so just give it a moment now again this is not going to work at all any USB device will not be working here so we're going to go ahead and use my PS2 mouse, which is working. Let's just show you that right here. Sorry if uh, I can't move it over here to the desk, but now you're wondering, well, how on earth are we gonna type our name? Well, there's this little uh, button here for ease of access. We will look for the keyboard, hmm. Keyboard application, ah, on-screen keyboard. Hit apply, and boom. So now we'll just hit OK here, or oops, cancel. And we'll just type in guest. Okay. We can minimize that. It'll be accessible down in the corner. Hit next. Oh. <laughs> I actually forgot that there is already a guest account, so let's go ahead and um, just put in guest 2. Okay. Next again. Ask me later. I am on the East Coast, so let's just put East Time. Very likely it may reboot one more time, really depends, but that's perfectly fine. 
Yep, in this case it will be rebooting again. And now we are officially in Windows 7. You ever have to go ahead and disable this keyboard when you get a chance. But again, USB devices will still not work. So this keyboard, nope, no response. And that's perfectly fine and acceptable. So go to start, go to computer. You guys can readjust the resolution if you'd like, but actually it might be easier for you guys to see if I leave it big. And go to our X470 drivers. We'll extract this if you haven't done that already. This might take a little moment. The trick is to get these chipset drivers installed. Once these are installed, so everything that you pretty much need is good to go with the exception of the LAN driver and of course your video card drivers. Something to keep in mind here, with the, when you follow this method, there's actually a couple of hot fixes to install. Now, I've actually been able to do this without installing the hot fixes. So for the time being, let's just go ahead and just try to install this without it. Except, this might be one of those moments where maybe raising the resolution might not be such a bad idea. So why don't we up, shoot it up a notch. So here, close this. Here you have the radium. Let's see exactly what's going to be installed. So let's hit custom, SATA driver, bus drivers. Could just want to even install USB. So let's go ahead and install this. You'll probably get that prompt uh, here and there because obviously this is. Um, fresh out of the box installation of Windows 7. All right. Let's go ahead and restart. After another reboot here, after we install our chipset drivers, go ahead and um, check out, see if uh, anything here was installed. Obviously, we'll be seeing a couple of missing things, as we can see here. And we do see USB controllers are in. And our keyboard and USB mouse are now working. One little note, though, I do have to tell you, because I did run into this particular error once or twice. Sometimes you have to unplug your USB device and then replug it back in and poof, magic works. But I did run into one occasion when I've done this method in the last within the last year where the USB ports were not recognized at all. And you can actually see they were here on under under other devices. And curiosity me decided to go into the folder here of all the chipset drivers. And the package, you find a driver folder, audio, display, other stuff. And here, if you scroll down, you'll see USB, three drivers and whatnot. If you run into the, air, the issue where after installing chipset drivers and a reboot, that you still have USB controller um, under other devices that are unknown or missing drivers, you might try to just give these particular driver folders a shot to see if you can get those ports up and running. I have noticed that particular time it worked and my ports began to work again.
at this point, obviously, you know, there's a lot of little weirdness going on. This is not, you may or may not have uh, Windows 7 SP1 installed. You might already have it installed, and then maybe some of these issues may or may not happen. It really all depends on the build of Windows 7 that you're installing. So I'll just keep that in mind as well, too. So this one's one without SP1 installed, so maybe I might have a couple more issues with it. Maybe I might not. But just keep that in mind in case you run into that little slight roadblock there that I just... So I went ahead and just uh, increased the resolution here so I can get all these windows all on one screen. And here we have it. Ryzen CPU on Windows 7 64-bit. All memory has been picked up correctly. All the cores that come with that CPU. And again, just uh, a couple little driver installations needs to be done. Just wanted to give you a little FYI. I, the version of the build of Windows 7 that I went ahead and installed here does not have the SP1 patch. So if you do use a build with the SP1, um, the installation results may actually vary a little bit involving the little USB issue I just mentioned earlier that I had with the next 370 board uh, over the last year. Just keep that in mind. So your results may actually vary a little bit depending. Uh, again, you got any questions about that, go ahead and shoot a comment. I want to also say one more thing. I definitely highly suggest once you get internet access on your new installation here and you get chips, um, the LAN drivers installed, definitely go ahead and run the chipset driver installation yet again. It does actively search for a newer driver from AMD directly and there may actually be a better driver to install there. So not a bad idea to run that. In this case, I'm not going to really find anything because there's no internet access on this computer. So. Really good method, not too complicated, a little bit of prep work obviously. Keep in mind as well too, this isn't only exclusive to AMD CPUs, this actually can work on Intel CPUs as well too. I actually do have a Skylake based C, uh, CPU and motherboard on another PC, and that when I tried to install Windows 7 did not actually pick up the USB ports or even the hard drive. Using this method, I was able to get into Windows 7 and was able to install chipset drivers and get everything going. So just definitely keep that in mind. Not totally exclusive to AMD CPUs and boards. Another little note here is once you get things going uh, and you do install Windows updates, you will reach a certain point where it will stop you and say, oh, the processor is not supported. There is a tool you can look up on, on uh, the internet, any web search, Google, Yahoo, etc. Um, search for Zephy and then type in WUFUC. You'll see a website and a tool that will allow you to bypass that nonsense and uh, basically get Windows updates rolling again on Windows 7 regardless of any CPU or motherboard you use. That's uh, obviously... Um, particular discussion that I probably won't get into, like why on earth did Microsoft do that, but it doesn't really matter why, as long as you can, you still use Windows updates on your computer, I think it's not a bad idea. Anyway, hope you guys found this video helpful, definitely like and subscribe, I definitely do plan to shoot another video hopefully once a week from now on, and if you have any questions about this method or any other queries or any suggestions, please let me know be more than happy to answer. Take care.